personally very happy uh, to welcome you, Mr. Kapoor. Uh, I'm sure our students would be hugely benefited by your presence. Thank you. The introduction, some of it is a little dated because you know we've moved on. We sold a few businesses, uh, but the the best job that I have, which you didn't mention, is I'm a father of four children. Uh, and that really is it's actually the best job that anyone can uh, that I could ever ever ask for. My father told me um, one of the best things that he did, you know, during his career, uh, and when he sort of um, you know stood up and spoke at many occasions. He said the best place to ever speak was at uh, business schools to students. That was the best interaction he ever had. So I'm looking forward to a good interaction. And whilst I'll run you through some slides, um, not a lot of information you may not know because you, you know, you, all of you are so well connected into what's going on, and, and it's a great school, and I'm sure you're all familiar with it. I'll run you through some slides, run you through the journey that I've been through, the journey our group has been through. Um, and then, um, you know, let's open up for questions and answers. I'd prefer to sort of uh, go through that with you to really understand what you want to learn from me and what you want to learn from the journey that I've been through. And then, of course, to our industry as well as any industry that I'm in touch with. So, I, I recently went to Tirupati and shaved my head, and that's why I look a little different. So it's not that uh, I sent you a picture from 20 years ago and and now here I am, which happens sometimes. I like this slide because it says if I'd asked my customers what they wanted, they'd said they would have said a faster horse. This really depicts the fact that you know your cust our customers today are not may not even know what they want because of this kind of disruption that's going on in the industry, and not just our industry, but it's going on across the across every industry. Let me give you an example of uh, the medical industry. I have an aunt, unfortunately, is very very old and has been through several surgeries and is in a lot of pain. She's replaced her knee, she's replaced many bones in her back and they're all over her body. She recently had a doctor who flew down and put a, a device in the back of her, right on her back, and a battery pack in front that actually controls pain. And it's a trial and error sort of uh, methodology of controlling it because you don't know what the nerves are connected to and how the nerve can block off the pain in the brain. So she actually had to sit for a few days on an iPad with the doctor administering, you know, when she got pain and how to cut that pain off. So I was in California and I met um, a guy who set up a 3D printed car company. And he says he can do literally 100 vehicles if required. Now that's mass customization because, you know, for, for volume, for price, for, for uh, to meet economies of scale, you need mass production. Uh, drivers of new mobility, again, you know, uh, com computing power, sensors, cameras, things that allow you to sort of go into level four autonomous. I was at the Daimler conference last year, uh, or earlier this year, and they will go to level four autonomous in trucks by 2023, which means trucks will actually be driving on streets in Germany on their own, which obviously means that the ecosystem will change. You won't require hotels, on, the, on those highways, you will require places to eat. So there's a whole lot of disruption that's going to come around with disruptions that happen in different industries. And that's something that we need to account for, something that we need to sort of plan for uh, in the future. Convenience, safety, environment, you know, again, buzzwords, and what's, what's driving, uh, you know, even today. So if you look at today, and you put environment, uh, safety, and convenience, which are societal concerns, Technological advances, and then what I talked about, connected electric uh, and autonomous and shared. I mean, the fact that electrification will come about, you will see in India, two wheelers and three wheelers go to electric completely in the next few years. I think passenger cars may take a little longer just because of the fact that charging is not uh, an infrastructure that's easily available. I think buses will go into electrification and trucks will take a little longer, of course. However, globally, you know, the trend is, is going to vary. Electric hybrid vehicles in PASCAR will come about much sooner than we think. So what will that do the, to the component industry, you know? Because if you look at electrification, there's a lot of parts you don't require. And that's really where the fear lies with the component industry. So there's going to be a good mix, uh, you know, in terms of electric and hybrid and uh, battery electric. And, and I have a slide somewhere that uh, I'll come to um, that, that sort of depicts what sort of numbers we're looking at, uh, if, if you guys are interested in that. 
uh, just to see where the market is headed uh, in terms of electrification, where the market is headed in terms of the automotive. I'll switch gears to you know our group. Um, that's that. That was our founder, my father. Uh, he passed away in 2015, but he founded the Sona Group um, back in 1987. Uh, Maruti uh, came about and Maruti needed suppliers, and uh, we went out and got a joint venture with a Japanese partner. It took, us, took him a long time to bring a joint venture, to convince the joint venture partner that India was a market that they should enter, just because India was a very, very small market at that point in time, not what it is today, you know, going to be the third largest automotive market. And, and the third PS6 largest. norm is going to get implemented, and I want to know how it's going to affect the whole scenario. Uh, on an overall perspective, other than price, uh, it won't have an impact on the component industry because most, the majority of the component industry that's not, or all the component industry that's not engine related will not have any impact. It's just an engine uh, uh, issue and we're well prepared for like, this. Uh, like by what, which year we can expect the changes? So I think, you, you know, you've been on Indian roads. Yeah. <laughs> I met a guy, you know, and he's a French guy. I said, there's so much chaos. You have two lanes and people make four lanes. He said, I think it's innovation. So, you know, it's how you look at it and how you perceive it. However, I feel that it's a far uh, cry for us to think that autonomous vehicles on Indian roads will work. Uh, you know, it depends on how quickly we adapt to following rules and there's a, an environment for discipline. I think where autonomous cars can happen is in campuses to begin with, uh, you know, smaller confined areas. Uh